In this video I will show you how you can read, process and flatten JSON files using notebooks in Must Fabric. Stay tuned! Welcome to the video, my name is Alex and on this channel I cover Muxed Fabric and Azure related topics. In this video we are continuing our journey with Muxed Fabric data engineering and today we are covering reading, processing and flattening JSON files in notebooks. Before watching this video you should be already familiar with explode function that I covered in the last episode in this series. Link to that video can be found in the description. But now let's talk a bit about today's topic. Nowadays JSON is a very common data format since many APIs offer data in that format and it is also a default input and output format for many systems. So I would say that for a modern data engineer it is a very essential to be comfortable with handling JSON files in data pipelines. In some cases JSON files can be quite flat, meaning that there are no nested objects or any hierarchical structures in the file and in these cases JSON acts more or less the same way as regular flat files like CSVs. However, it is quite typical that JSON file has some hierarchical structure that needs to be processed and flattened so that the data is in more usable format for analytical purposes or compatible with some relational databases that doesn't support complex data types like arrays and objects. For this video I have prepared a JSON file that we are going to process together so that the hierarchical structure is removed and the data is completely flat in a more usable format for all use cases. All the materials that I will be using in the following tutorial can be found by clicking the link in the description. Let's get started. Let's start from my lake house where I have this zoo.json file, where we have the data that we are going to process today. Let's take a bit closer look what we have here. In this file we have one object and in that object we have this property called zoo and that zoo is actually an array and in that array we have two more objects. We have the first object here and then we have the second object here. Both of these objects represents a zoo. Our first zoo is in USA, California, San Diego and it has a zoo ID of 1. Then we have the second zoo here that is in Australia, New South Wales, in Sydney. Then in these zoos we have some animals. In the first zoo we have animals property and in that property we have two objects here. Our first animal in the zoo one is the lion and the second one is the elephant. And then we have bunch of properties per animal here. We have some characteristics per animal. Here we have information like the diet and the lifespan. And then we have this habitat array that tells in which environment this animal lives. And then we have also some weight information about this animal. We have all of these same properties for our different animals here. And in our zoo two we have also an elephant and then we have a penguin and also those same properties for those. And one crucial thing to identify here is that we have many arrays here and good rule of thumb is when flattening JSON files these arrays should be all in the individual tables. So this means that when we are going to flatten this file we are going to end up with three tables. Our first table is going to be the zoo, our second table is going to be the animals and then our third table is going to be this habitat table. Because if we don't put these arrays into a separate table, we would be repeating some information on each row multiple times and that is not the result that we most likely want in the real case. I have also opened this file to my VS Code editor here so we can check out this file when we are building our notebook and see how we are processing each layer of this file when we move forward with the video. I have this blank notebook here that I have already attached to the lake house where I have that zoo.json file. Next I would like to read in this JSON file and create a temporary view out of that JSON file so we can query that data using the Spark SQL API. Let's add that code here and now let's run that code. And now we have read in that JSON file to this DF zoo raw and then created this DF zoo raw view that we can now query using the SQL API. Next I would like to select everything from that view and just display that using this code here. So we can see what kind of data we are dealing with here. And with this code we have now only selected that zoo property in our JSON because that is the first layer what we have in our JSON if we take a look at here in the VS code that. So basically now we are at this layer. So next we would need to move into that layer where we have those different zoos here. So let's try to do that. For that we are going to need the explode function that we covered last time. So we are going to basically explode this zoo array to different rows. Let's run this and let's see what happens. 
and now we have two rows here. So we have now separated those two objects that we have in that zoo array to their individual rows. So this is a good beginning. And also I would like to note that it seems to be that there is some kind of bug going on in the fabric that I'm not getting the syntax highlight to my SQL statements that I'm usually getting. But let's not allow that to bother us that much. Now after we have exploded those zoos out to their individual rows, I would like to query out some properties out of these zoos. So let's add a code that would do that. So basically now we have this query here as a subquery and then we are selecting everything from the individual objects that we have here. Let's run this query and let's see what kind of result we get. Now we can see that we get more data here. We have now queried everything that we had inside this zoo object. So we have kind of peeled off that object I would say. And now we are querying this layer here, this zoo layer, and we also have that animals array there as well as we can see. But since we're trying to get rid of these complex data types like objects and arrays, I don't want to have this animal array in our zoo table. So I would like to create a new table from this zoo data only and then have that animals data in its separate table. And here I have the code that we can use to query that zoo data to this zoo table. Let's run this and let's see what happens. So we modified this query a bit. Instead of selecting star, we are selecting individual properties from the zoo, like zoo ID, country and city. And now we have this data and we have removed that animals data that we are not going to have in this zoo table. So this query would be our first query to create an actual table out of that array where we have the zoo information. Next, I would like to move one step down and I would like to get this animal data to its own table. So we would now need to explode this animal array to its different rows. So let's do that. And here I have the query that again uses that same subquery to first explode the zoo. And then after that we are exploding also the animals array to its own rows. And let's see what happens when we run this. And now we can see that we have all the animals in their separate rows, but they're still inside their objects and in one column. That is not the result what we want. So now we would like to select the individual properties out of these objects to their own columns. So let's do that. And here I have the code that will actually get all the properties from that animals out to their separate columns. Again using that star so we can see how that data will look. And also note that I'm also getting the zoo ID from the zoo level here. And I will now tell why I'm doing that. Let's check out our JSON and I will try to explain that. Now when we are breaking down this JSON to its separate table, so we are going to have the zoo table and then we are going to have the animals table. I'm going to add this zoo ID to this animal table as well so we can tell to which zoo each animal belongs to. If we don't take this zoo from this level and add that to that animal table, we cannot tell from which zoo each animal is from. So if you know something about the data modeling, we can think about this zoo ID as the primary key of that zoo table and then it will be a foreign key in that animal table. But we're not going to dive too deep into this data modeling stuff here. Next, let's run this query and see how it looks. And here we have that data. So we have the zoo ID and then we have the animal ID. And here we have all the four animals that we have in the JSON. Also, as we can see, we still have some complex data types here. Like we have this characteristics object here that has more information in it. Otherwise, this already looks good. But I would like to flatten out this characteristics object to this same table if possible. And then only that habitat array there I would like to add to its own table. Let's again check out our JSON here. So now we are on this level querying the JSON. And here we have the characteristics property. We would like to flatten out this diet, lifespan and then the, all the properties in the lifespan and then the weight in kilograms for the male and female to the same level as this animal ID name and species. And since these characteristics are just objects, if we exclude the habitat, we can flatten out them to the same row with these. And here I have the query that will flatten out that animal data and remove those complex data types. Let's run this query and let's see 
how does the data look? As we can see, now we have completely flattened out that animal data. And we can see that we managed to get those characteristics to this same level as the other information. But that required some object references here. For example, we are referring to animals' characteristics lifespan in wild. And then we are creating this column called characteristics lifespan in wild. And that will describe the information that we have in this nested object. And when we take a look at this JSON file here, it is quite easy to understand and that when querying this animals data, we can refer to this animals object here, and then we can refer to the lifespan, and then we can refer to the in wild by using this dot object reference there. And then we are able to get this information that we have here to one single level. And here we have the query for our second table, zoo animals. Next, I would like to create one last table out from that characteristics data using this query here. So again, we have those same subqueries here. So we first explode the zoo information, then the animal information, and then we also explode this characteristics habitat information. And then we're also getting that animal ID so we know to which animal each habitat belongs to. So let's run this and let's see what happens. And here we have those habitats per animal here. And again, the same thing here that this animal ID here links to the animal table that we have here in order us to know which characteristics habitat belongs to which animal. Next, I will show you how you can create lake house tables out of these queries that we just created here. But before we do that, I would like you to know that I spent a lot of my free time creating these videos for you. And that's why I would like to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more Mark Fabric data engineering content. It doesn't cost you anything and I would highly appreciate that. But now let's continue with the video. Here I have another notebook where I have the code that will actually create those lake house tables out of those queries that we defined in that previous notebook. First we have the code that will read in that raw JSON file to a data frame and then create that view out of that data frame so we can use Spark SQL API to query that. And then we will create a new schema to our lake house and then we will create the zoo table using the query that we created in that other notebook and then we will create that zoo animals table and then finally we will create that zoo animal characteristics habitat table and now we can run this notebook and see what happens and now our notebook has run and we can refresh our lake house and we can see that we have a new schema here and under that schema we have those three tables that we just created here. I hope you now have an idea how you can process and flatten JSON files using notebooks in Max Fabric. If you'd like to learn more about Fabric, check out this video next. Now I thank you for watching and see you in that video.